So, it, so let's see. Let's let, let's start. Let's start it off. Colorado native. This is this is my home, Colorado. I've been all over this state my whole entire life. Okay. So I was born in Colorado Springs, and I lived in Greeley for about three years. And we moved out of there because my dad wanted me to know my my grandfather, his father, because he was a great man. He was from World War II, and he made a lot of things happen. Um, but he was not only that, but he was just a solid individual. So he took me out to Missouri so I could get to know him. Uh, I was out there for about seven years, and my mom fell prey to uh, the. He, she was of the one of the first of the medical uh, fiascos. Whenever you get sick, you lose everything you have. So she had uh, open heart surgery, had a mitral valve put in, m mechanical valve, and we went bankrupt, and we decided to move back to Colorado. So we came back to Colorado. My father started his own business, medical transcription. Did that for 15 years, ground it out. Okay, he was worth a half a million dollars, but he could not get insurance because my mother had pre-existing. Okay, so now my my father in 2004 has a heart attack. Okay, now he's he's done. It, 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 it's you know no 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 more working. No, it's time to relax and chill out. Okay, so mom's gonna keep typing a little bit, and we're gonna keep the business going, and uh, dad manages to pay the the uh, heart attack off with the, with the visa, okay? So we're okay, we can keep the house, we're doing all right. So about six weeks later, my mother throws a stroke, okay? Well, about two weeks, we rack up another $250,000, so bankruptcy it is. But what I did was I came, I came back from Hawaii where I was living to help them rebuild this house and try to sell it in a, in a crap economy that you can't sell any houses in. So. We put some time in. I put a year in and trying to rebuild that house and get it get it ready. Got it on the market. Never sold. Finally gave it up to the to the to the uh, banks and auctioned everything we we had off except for what we could haul across Kansas. We took about a year, I think about oh four or five trips getting across Kansas uh, with all of our stuff. These are fairly large loads, and uh, the day that we got there, two days after we got there, a tornado comes in, blows it all over the county we just moved into. So. Uh, my grandfather picks up, you know, he, he, he picks up the bid, he gets me a new roof, uh, you know, gets, gets me set up because I bought a shop there and my parents were going to move in with their parents because, you know, they just went bankrupt and they're 60 years old so they're going to move back in with my dad's parent, with my, with my dad's father. So uh, we move back in and, and uh, this tornado hits us, we get everything kind of cleaned up and you know, depression kind of hits in a little bit, you know, but we kind of climb out of it, and I got my mom and dad situated out there pretty good, got granddad off the planet, got him an honorable way out in the house that he camped in and built and died in. He camped in, he, he, built, he built it and lived in it for 40 years, one of the nicest houses in town, okay? It hasn't got a drywall crack in it, hasn't touched it. Anyway, so... Anyway, there's that. So tornado, all this stuff. I meet my wife, have my children out there, and I finally say, okay, parents are set up, good to go. I'm going to get out of here. I got a uh, 1972 Greyhound bus that's built out of aluminum, stainless steel, and American iron that, you know, it's about 50, 60,000 pounds and built for 3 million miles. It's, it's indestructible. So I got that thing for my kids and I to live in while we came out here to Colorado to find the place that we wanted to live. My brother was nice enough to let us stay at his place for a while, but I couldn't overstay my welcome there. So we got a place up in Idaho Springs. It was kind of sketchy. It was a storage unit, but it had electric and gas, and everybody was kind of staying there on the low key. And they had built houses, and, and everything was kind of okay, but I was still sketchy. So I, we drive around, and we're looking for places to stay. We come down here, and we find a place that, uh, you know, we can... We can stay. You know, we can we can we can afford this. It's it's three four thousand dollars for five acres, and you can camp, live on it, and build your house. Well, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. I've already got a house. The school's six miles away. Uh, my my kids are going to be growing up here in the next two three years. I need to get a house going. Uh, I want to have running water. I want to have all these things. But the county uh, issued me a, a road access permit and a driveway permit. I cut those in, moved my stuff down, which took everything I got, and I went down to get my long-term RV camping permit or my construction permit, and I was refused those two things. So I'm not trying to move in and screw the county out of some money. I'm trying to make the county some money. I'm trying to build a nice house the county can tax for lots of generations, not just one, not just, not just uh, 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 for the length of the mortgage. I'm going to build one that, you know, another resident can move in. Your bank can do the whole thing again, do another loan, do the whole, you can do the whole kit and caboodle without having to have 
a carpenter or somebody come out and maintain it right after I, you know, got done paying the mortgage. So I'm building a house that hopefully lasts two to three hundred years, uh, self-sustained off the grid because I don't want to be on the nipple anymore. I want to be off of oil. I don't want to be sucking on propane. I don't want to be sucking on coal. I don't want these things. I want my children to understand that a carbon footprint matters and I'm doing everything that I can to lo lower and lessen my carbon footprint so that the future of humanity has a place to work with so that they don't have to be incredibly clever to figure out how to fix the party that we left behind okay this is an oil party folks we're eating it we're breathing it we're drinking it it's everything in our lives okay and the fact is once it's over there's going to be a population decrease because there's not going to be the fer the oil fertilizer is not going to be the oil glyphosate and all the crap that you use to pour on all the food that we eat it's not going to be here so that's why I'm here. This is a, a little anomaly in America that hasn't been completely chemicalized. The people here are aware of what's going on around them and they want to make sure that they hold on to their culture. I'm with that. I want my children to know every single thing about this county. I want, to, I want them to know about San Luis Valley in general because this is an amazing place. It's one of the only places like it on the planet. Uh, I want to preserve it. I mean, I, I don't want to destroy this place. I'm not here to trash it. I'm here to preserve it. Anyway, my name's Michael. Uh, I've been a Colorado native for a long time. I got pushed out once before. I know what it's like to get pushed out. I know these people here are worried about me moving in here. But the fact is, is if you don't let me move in and you put in these permits that don't allow me to build my house as I go. The people that are going to be moving in here are going to be people with lots and lots of money, and they're going to be here maybe two, three months out of the year. And you know, I, I don't know what kind of culture that is, but whatever, whatever. I know that I'm going to try and hang on to it. I try to bleed into wherever I am because it's a good, it's a good way to be. I don't want to change the way things are here. I like the way they are here. That's why I came here. So anyway, to the people of San Luis Valley and Costilla County, you know, I love you, man. I, I think this place is great, and I just want to be here. I, I want to raise my children here, and I want to have a good time here and, and maybe kick back a few beers and, and, uh, and enjoy the view. You know, that's, that's what I want to do. And, you know, if that's, a, if that's a crime in America, I guess it's a crime. But, uh, you know, so be it. Um, peace out. Love you all.